Hi, I'm Cameron. Today, Yulia and I will be presenting Typical, a visualization of common function signatures for the R programming language. This research was done with the help of several other collaborators listed here, all at Northeastern University. Before we start, I want to give a brief overview of some of the contributions of our work. First, a task abstraction for programming language designers, especially type system developers. The design and implementation of Typical, an interactive visualization of runtime type signatures that you can see on the left. And also, an initial validation of the system. We'll be focusing on the second point in this talk. So, what's the motivation for visualizing runtime type signatures? Well, suppose you're a programming language designer working on R, a programming language that's often used for statistics and data analysis. And you've been hearing a lot about gradual type systems, like TypeScript. A gradual type system takes an existing dynamically typed programming language, in this case JavaScript, and adds static types. In this example, we have a simple addition function. The TypeScript version at the top has type annotations on the parameters of the function, indicating that the arguments will be numbers. These type annotations are checked at compile time. This is in contrast to the JavaScript version at the bottom, which has no type annotations and is not statically type checked. With gradual typing, a programmer can have a system with both typed and untyped components, and the whole thing will still work. This is great for developers who want to reap some of the benefits of static types without having to commit to migrating an existing code base to a brand new language. So if you want something like this for R, how do you go about designing its type system? A type system requires you to make lots of choices. Do you want subtyping? What about polymorphism? How do you handle objects and mutation? Typically, you would use your personal experience writing code. Lots and lots and lots of code. And you'd come up with something that's reasonable. But this is pretty ad hoc, and it's a potentially biased approach. How one person writes code is unlikely to be representative of all developers who use the language. A more principled approach would be data-driven. You could have a hypothesis, collect relevant data from a large body of real-world programs, and then confirm or refute your hypothesis based on this evidence. But there's a big problem with this approach, and that's code is rich in structure and in meaning, and it's difficult to analyze and interpret broad trends across a whole programming language ecosystem. Take runtime type signatures as an example. If we want to gather a suitable data set, you can perform the following procedure. Take a bunch of programs, run each of them, record the input and output types of every function call. Running one small program may result in a table of signatures that can be analyzed by hand, like we have here. But what if we run many, many programs? The table of signatures could end with millions of entries. How do you make sense of it all? That's where Typical comes in. Let's see how it works. With Typical, a program and language designer can visually explore the multitude of function type signatures in the raw dataset. This is Typical's main view. The core component of the visualization, a parallel sets diagram, represents every function type signature as a type flow. We'll get back to this panel shortly. To the right of type flows, there is a filtering panel. It allows the user to explore and filter the dataset, focusing on subsets of interest. For example, to find information about a specific function, just type its name into the search box. Alternatively, we can use these three maps to get information about specific packages or functions within those packages. Next, let's look at type flows. Every flow corresponds to a single function type signature, and multiple signatures of the same function are bundled together. In this example, we are looking at ABS function, which returns the absolute value of a number. The name of the function is displayed at the top of the diagram. Every type signature flows top to bottom. Horizontal lines indicate argument types, with the bottom one being the return type. Thus, the highlighted flow corresponds to a function from integer to integer. The 61k annotation means that ABS has been called 61,000 times. 
width of flows is proportional to their frequency in the dataset. Finally, let's discuss some examples of how programming language designers can use Typical to develop a type system. They can ask the following question. Is ABS function polymorphic? Meaning, does it work with arguments of different types? The answer is yes, most definitely, because we can clearly see multiple flows going from the same function name. Compare this to the monomorphic case, where there is just a single flow for a function. Next, knowing that ABS is polymorphic, a researcher can make a hypothesis that its return type will always coincide with the argument type. However, this isn't the case. We can see from the picture that there are two different flows ending in the return type of double. Thus, at least one of them has to have a different argument type. So, to recap, Typical is an interactive visualization tool for programming language designers. It allows them to explore and analyze function type signatures and helps create a type system. Typical represents type signatures as flows, which enables their quick comparison and analysis. More details about the design and implementation of Typical, as well as a usability study for the R language, can be found in the paper. Our source code and preprint are available on OSF, and live visualization can be accessed online. Thank you.